Hi, I'm Susan Hubbard. I'm a scientist in the Earth Sciences Division at Lawrence Berkeley Lab, and I am part of a team called Next Generation Ecosystem Experiment, or NG team. Um, the rest of the team members are, are scattered around here in the field, and um, we're at the early stage in this experiment in trying to define where we want to put our field study sites. That's what we're doing out here today. We're scoping out field sites. Um, and this one is near a town called Council. We're on the Seward Peninsula, um, kind of a warm and transitional landscape for this part of the Arctic. And we're actually just sitting here in the middle of what's called a thermal karst feature. And these are the type of features that we're interested in studying. Um, because these features are basically uh, areas where this permafrost is degrading. Um, this degrading permafrost changes the distribution of water, both laterally and vertically. That distribution of water changes the nutrients that go into uh, growing these plants, as well as the redox conditions. That's important for the subsurface microbial ecology. And all of that, in turn, um, impacts uh, the energy balance and the greenhouse gases, uh, both CO2 and methane, that go back into the atmosphere. So what we're interested in doing in the NG experiment is um, trying to understand these coupled processes, the hydrology, the geochemistry, the microbiology, the vegetation dynamics, and how they change over space and time. And we can use features like these thermocarst features to understand that. We've chosen two different sites to start this experiment. As I said, this is the council site, which is the warmer of the two sites that we're choosing. This is a site where um, the permafrost is, is very thin and in some cases discontinuous. Um, the other site that we are considering is Barrow. Uh, at the, the northernmost city in the United States, and it's a much colder environment with very thick and continuous permafrost. So by looking at these two environments and, and understanding how these coupled hydrological, biogeochemical, vegetation processes occur as a function of this degrading um, permafrost, we hope to gain an understanding about um, the energy balance and greenhouse gases and how that will ultimately impact climate. Hi. I'm Margaret Torn of the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory, and I work in the Earth Sciences Division as a biogeochemist, mainly studying the carbon cycle. And we're here in Barrow, Alaska, uh, scouting out sites for the next generation ecosystem experiment that DOE hopes to conduct. One of the things that I'm going to look at is the fate of all this carbon. So, as the soils warm, the microbes become more active, and there's more decomposition of CO2 and methane. And we'll be having running some eddy flux towers or eddy covariance towers that measure CO2 and methane flux and looking at how that's changing seasonally and in different parts of the landscape. And then we'll also have a chamber. So we'll be looking at the difference in carbon fluxes in areas that are high and relatively dry like this one and then low and wet behind me. And uh, these may not look like big changes in topography but they affect the moisture a lot and they affect the plant species a lot. So we expect to see big differences. And as permafrost thaws, there's <clears throat> changes in this topography and in the vegetation then that will affect that moisture and the, and the carbon fluxes. The other thing that we're looking at is albedo. You'll just see that some of the plant species here are, are much brighter than others. This is lichen that's really bright, for example. And so we're going to be looking at how changes in vegetation also contribute Albedo, and that's a big effect in feedback to climate change. This is the really carbon dense, carbon rich part of the soil, and it can be a meter deep. Then you have this material, this sort of gray mineral soil that doesn't have as much carbon, but it can be meters and meters thick. So in the end, there's really a lot of carbon here too. And as permafrost melts, this is what becomes newly available to microbes. Then it thaws and uh, carbon here can be released to the atmosphere. What we want to do is study this area at very intensively, like very small patches, and really understand them. And then more at this kind of a, a landscape scale. And then scale that eventually from here to the southern end of the transect. And, no. and the ultimate goal of this project is to develop a process level understanding of the response of the landscape to warming and how to scale it in a way that we can build a much better model for prediction of climate change feedbacks. 